Kevin Harrington. With over 500 products launched and generating over $5 billion in product sales in over 100 countries, Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial as seen on TV Pioneer and original shark on the Emmy Award winning TV show Shark Tank. Kevin creates massive brands by combining great products with superstar talent like Kim Kardashian, 50 Cent, Kathy and Paris Hilton, Kris Jenner, CeeLo Green, George Foreman, Montel Williams, Jack LaLanne, Flo Rida, Hulk Hogan, Billy Mays, Paula Abdul, and Tony Little. My brand now is worth over $3 billion. Uh, so my advice to everybody, if you even have an idea, you'd want to go to Kevin Harrington. Kevin has been featured on 2020, CNN, Fox Business, Bloomberg, Jim Cramer's The Street, MTV, Good Morning America, the CBS Morning News, The Today Show, The View, and The Daily Double on Jeopardy. Now the last clue, back to the Shark Tank. I'm Kevin Harrington. A renowned speaker, Kevin has appeared on stage for organizations like AT&T, Microsoft, United States Postal Service, Humana, 3M, FedEx, Auburn University, Harvard, and MIT. Kevin has authored several books, including Act Now, How I Turned Ideas into Million Dollar Products, and the bestseller, How to Become a Key Person of Influence. Kevin is a pioneer of the direct response industry and has risen to nearly iconic status over the years. Kevin helped to found EO, the Entrepreneurs' Organization, and ERA, the Electronic Retailing Association, receiving their Lifetime Achievement Award. An entrepreneur for over 40 years, Kevin has built 20 businesses to over $100 million each. That's why he's the original shark from Shark Tank, the billion dollar man, Kevin Harrington. Let's give Kevin a warm welcome. Oh, hey, thank you. All right. Great to be here. How many recognize that music? Yeah. Shark Tank, right? Okay. Well, it's so funny because I'm going to get it right out of the way right away because everyone says to me, hey, tell me about Kevin O'Leary, right? How many, <laughs> right? So when I was taking a picture, they said, is he really that difficult? Or some people say that much of an asshole. Okay, I'm sorry. But no, he's. Um, you know why he calls himself Mr. Wonderful? Because nobody else will. All right? Yeah. He, he kisses the mirror every morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but actually, he, it's part of his brand. And so, uh, because he raises money, and he doesn't even use his own money when he does Shark Tank. So, uh, so if he's using other people's money to do a stupid deal, those people will get upset. So, so he has to be the tough guy, right? So... Uh, it's, it's been kind of a, uh, an interesting run, Shark Tank. I'm going to tell you a couple stories about Shark Tank, but I want to start really talking more about how I started as an entrepreneur and some of the things I've learned over the years, some of the ups and some of the downs that I've had. And so uh, before I start, though, I want to ask, how many entrepreneurs are in the room? See so a show of hands. Almost just about everybody, right? Good. So that's what you told me. Everybody really is an entrepreneur looking to take their business to great heights. And so um, I, I just found out you said you've got 500 dealers and over 30 of them now have made multi-million multi 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 dollar businesses. So, so I think that's hopefully, I'll share a couple tips today, but I also, I've learned as much from my mistakes as I have from my successes. So I'm gonna share some of those problems that I ran into along the way, because there's been a, there's a transition happening right now in the marketplace. And I'm going to go back to the early days when I first started. Do you remember TV in the 60s? Black and white TV? Let me see a show of hands. Like, oh, if you. Yeah. This, you know, black and white television. I, I remember it, and I remember then when cable first came. And when cable first came, HBO was 24 hours of movies and CNN, 24 hours of news. MTV was music. But I got to the Discovery Channel and there was actually colored bars on the screen. That was Channel 30. I had a 30 channel package and Channel 30, there was nothing there. So I called the cable company and I said, what's, on, you know, what's going on? I've got nothing on Discovery. And they said, oh, Discovery is only an 18 hour a day network. Six hours a day, we put up colored bars. And that's when the light bulb went off for me. And I actually said, wait a minute, there's got to be something we can put on there. And that's what I endeavored to do as a young entrepreneur. So, so I went to 
I was at, I was at, and traveling all over the place doing a lot of trade shows at the time, and I was at the Philadelphia Home Show, and there was a, a one booth that had this huge crowd around it, and this guy had a knife in his hand. He was cutting through a Coca-Cola can, and then he was going through a hammer, through a pair of sneakers, through a muffler. He said, it's the Ginsu knife. And he said, it's so sharp it can still cut a tomato thin enough that you can read the Sunday newspaper through it, right? And so people were literally throwing thousands of dollars at this guy over the, uh, the next hour that I watched him. And so that's when I, I, I went to him when he got on break, and I said, his name found out was Arnold Morris, and I said, Arnold, how long have you been selling this Ginsu? He said, Kevin, I do this 40 weeks a year, and I've been doing it for dozens of years. I go, next week I'm in Iowa at the State Fair, and I'll be at the boat show after that, and he just goes week to week selling the knife. And that's when I said, Arnold, I said, do you know there's six hours of downtime on Discovery? Why don't we, instead of you having to do all that traveling, why don't we take a camera and film it and put it up on Discovery, cut a deal with the cable company? And this is back in 1984, and here's the segment we shot. Let me ask you something. How many knives do you have at home this sharp? You could drop the tomato on top. Pretty sharp, right? Do you know what one young lady said? <laughs> Can you cut them thin? I said, thin, one tomato will last you all week long. How many have ever seen Arnold Morris or that, that, dim, that Ginsu demonstration, right? Pretty cool. So Arnold, God bless him, uh, this became a pretty big success because we went on to take that around the world over $500 million in global sales as I call it the world's first viral video. Let's give Arnold a round of applause. God bless him. Arnold has since passed away, but then Arnold said to me, he says, Kevin, he said, you don't have to be an inventor. You can partner with people like me. He said, how about I bring you other people and, and you know, if you give me a little piece of the action, I'll bring you some more guys, girls. And he brought both. And so the next one he introduced me to was Billy Mays. You remember Billy from uh, the, the neighborhood here. He lived right here in Tampa. So we, we met Billy, then we met John Parkin, and then Sandy Mason, and all of these people. And what we did is we took them we took all these shows then all around the world. In fact, because um, if there were bars on a screen in the U.S., there was bars on a screen everywhere. Here's Tony Little, who's also another local uh, Tampa guy. And when I met Tony in 1989, we did his first infomercial, his second infomercial, and done about a dozen with him now. But here's Tony. We took him into in foreign languages. Zitoefening niet werkt. Heet het niet op zitoefening? Is geen zitoefening nooit meer zo noemen. Oké, spijt Voeten stevig. Zie je hoe ze haar handen op haar midriff heeft? Niet achter je hoofd. Nee, niet achter je hoofd. Ze moet zien wat ze aan het doen. So we would run this all. We, we would take a Tony Little infomercial, dub it into Dutch, German, Swedish, uh, Italian, French, Spanish, uh, Japanese, Chinese, just all over the world. And that's for how the Ginsu created a five hundred million dollar business. So, so bottom line is then. So here, here I was. Uh, I then done you know hundreds of infomercials with with a lot of cool people, and that was when I got the phone call uh, from Mark Burnett. And Mark was on the, Mark does the, the Apprentice, uh, The Voice, uh, you know, The Survivor, and he's on the other line it's a, almost 10 years ago, and he said, hey, Kevin, I'm shooting a new TV show. Would you like to come out and talk to me? Uh, we're interviewing uh, a lot of folks that maybe that would want to be on the show. And I said, can you tell me anything about it at all? And he said, no, he said, it's too complicated. Just jump on a plane, get out here, get here in the next two weeks because we're making some real decisions. It's called Shark Tank. I'll tell you all about it when you get here. So I said, okay, great. I'll be there. I uh, got off the phone. I was pretty excited. So I told my wife, I said, hey, I'm going to go and hang out with Mark Burnett. He's, he's got a new show that he thinks maybe I'd be right for. And she said, well, what is it? He, he wouldn't tell me anything about it, but it, it's called Shark Tank. And she said, Kevin, wait a minute. Do you know what he does to those people on that Survivor Island show? <laughs> you want to be on Shark Tank? Okay. I'm like, hmm, good point. I, you know, now, when we actually shot the show, they had live sharks in tanks on the set. So we, we didn't know who's going in that tank. I said, are the sharks, you know, are we going to go in or the people that don't get funded? That, that was sort of a little joke about that. But um, anyway, it, that was, that was fine. One more Shark Tank story, but now, it's Celebrity Shark Tank, if you've been following. You got Alex Rodriguez and Richard Branson and 
Bethany Frankel, of course, John Paul DeGiorio, Ashton Kutcher was a shark for um, a couple segments. And so um, I, this, this is kind of a funny story. When, when um, I got a, a, an invite to a wedding and there's Robert Herjavec, we're smoking a cigar over there. Of course, everyone asked me, who's, who's the sweetest shark? And that would be Barbara, she's really, really cool. And um, many of these deals have done pretty well. And a lot of them haven't done. And this is where we're going to start talking about some of the tougher things that have happened in my entrepreneurial career. But um, the, the, to finish this story out, the producers of Dancing with the Stars were over at Shark Tank one day because Shark Tank's on ABC Network and so is Dancing with the Stars. And so they said, hey, we want to cross promote the shows and we'd love to have a shark come on Dancing with the Stars. And we're all hanging out, Robert and, and Mr. Wonderful, my wife was there. And so they said, well, who wants to do this? And so we're, I'm looking over at my wife and Robert says, hey, I'd love to do that. And I said to my wife, what do you think? Should I go on Dancing with the Stars? She says, you're not gonna go on that show. All right, I said, oh, okay. I said, what's the problem? She said, they dance way too close on that show, right? <laughs> I, I don't think I'd wanna see you on national television like that, right? So I said, okay, well, Robert's kind of an adventuresome type guy. Let's let, he'll do the first season and then we'll see what happens. So here's Robert's segment. And, uh, and you can see, can see if they dance a little close here. No matter where you say, <laughs> you know that you'll be heard. Now this is where the story gets crazy. So Robert actually was married at the time that he went on Dancing with the Stars. Now look at the, the girl there and now there she is in his wedding shortly thereafter. Okay, so I say, I think they got a little close, all right? You know, so, so they, she, she, he said that his marriage was on the rock. So, uh, but yeah, they got married. He married his girl from Dancing with the Stars, Kim Johnson. So, so that was their, their big wedding out in, in LA at the Four Seasons just recently. So it's, it, you know, Shark Tank has been a really cool thing. It's now running in, in uh, probably about 45 countries, 400 million homes and it's given me a chance to do a lot of traveling. So it's, it's launched, it's over in Singapore. I was in Singapore and Hong Kong, Seoul, Korea. And really what I do now is I help entrepreneurs supercharge their business. And this is what I've been doing myself now for, for many years. And so this is where the story gets a little tough for me because I was sitting at, at my heyday, and this is now a number of years ago, I had 500 employees, I had a huge fulfillment center, an 80,000 square foot fulfillment center, and we had our own media company, 75 people. We had 100 people in our customer service center, 35,000 square foot studio, which is right over, just across the bridge over in Largo here. And so I was sitting there with all of this, you know, infrastructure. Now we were doing $500 million a year in sales, but at, at its peak, Things were working great, but then this is what started happening. And as, as, we look at, as we look at the world today, what's happening on TV, magazines, newspapers, starting to go down, viewership, readership, et cetera, right? Um, it's no secret that millennials are ditching their TV sets. In fact, um, Morgan Stanley did a report that TV viewership has dropped by 50%. And so when you think about that, uh, ESPN lost 12 million subscribers. And uh, the um, Yahoo said 56 million plus people have actually <laughs> cut the cord. It's amazing. And here I am, Mr. As Seen on TV, and people are running from the TV set, right? I mean, e uh, ABC, which is Disney, Disney owns ABC and they own ESPN, They're, they stopped they're no longer selling the movies to Netflix because they're launching their own digital channels now. So there's this huge bloodbath that's happening. And this is the worst slide of all. The, the, the straight line across is the TV ad revenues and then the green line is the viewership. So while they stayed the same, we are getting half the viewers. And so basically what this did is it virtually is putting us out of business. And so th this is where I realized that we had hit 
rock bottom because we had done every, every celebrity that came in pretty much, you know, Frankie Avalon for pain and the Hiltons for beauty and, uh, and you know, Jack LaLanne and the juicer and George Foreman, all these guys. Well, when we did this one, we realized things are now different. Now you can put on your favorite music and have fun dancing all those extra inches and pounds away. Presenting the one-of-a-kind, low-impact, calorie-burning, muscle-toning, total body exercise that's fun, fast, and easy. The revolutionary new twist sizer from the man who got the whole world twisting, Chubby Checker. My lesson here, if, if a man named Chubby walks in your office to do a fitness product, you should say no, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I said yes, all right, but that, that was the problem because we, we were investing in all these celebrity deals and it, it was just, we, we realized now because viewership was dropping, but we thought, oh, well, this is going to work because people want to have fun while they exercise. But no, it wasn't. And so, so this, is, this is me. I owned AsSeenOnTV.com, AsSeenOnTV, Inc. We had thousands of products on all these different places in retail stores. But this is what it felt like for me coming into the office. Burning. Like our business, literally, our sales, we went from $500 million down to $400 million, down to $350 million. And so... I said, you know, this is what it felt like a Monday morning because we ran most of our media on the weekends. And so, so you know, I said to myself, and, and while we were going through this, it, it, it wasn't just absolutely obvious every day. We had to almost take a break and pull back from our day-to-day -day business and see what's happening because, you, you know, it, the viewership was just kind of dropping a little bit by little bit. Now, as we can look at it, it was it had dropped fifty percent, but the rates were staying the same. So I said to myself, I can't keep doing this because we were very profitable at one time. Now we were not even we were barely breaking even, and just keeping you know doing three hundred fifty million a year, but just just to pay for all of our overhead, right? So I said to myself, I got to get smart, and and this is one of the messages that I want to leave with everybody here. And I think the, the power of getting coaches and mentors and advisors in your life is, is, is so important. And for me, it started with my father when I was a young entrepreneur who taught me to be an entrepreneur. And then guys like Arnold that said, you don't have to be the inventor. You can partner with those that have the products. So that's what we started doing. And then Mark Burnett said, hey, look, you can use the TV show to build your brand. But I got invited to a really cool mastermind. And this was down at Necker Island. How many recognize uh, Richard Branson there? Or is it, OK, Necker Island, right? So, um, so Richard Branson said, come on down. And I had a connection that knew him because I said, I need to find what's going on in my business. I need, I need some advice, I need some, some direction. And um, Richard Branson, he's, you know, first of all, these were intense meetings uh, all weekend long. It was, it was three days at Necker Island with Richard. And, um, you know, it's kind of like the kind of thing that goes on in these kind of meetings here is getting an understanding of what do you have to do to go to the next level. And so, um, and, and, I was running my business so close day to day that it was a little bit tough for me to see really what was happening. But when I was here at the island, I could step back and listen to experts like Richard say, Richard said, Kevin, there's shifts in the marketplace. You need to be ahead of these shifts instead of behind the shifts, right? And this is, this is another uh, a funny part, but uh, Richard's like, hey, he's the kind of guy that jumps out of airplanes, has a lot of fun. And one night he says, hey, look, we've been working all day. Let's go out on the beach and let's do some sumo wrestling. So, um, so I say, I'm the Necker Island sumo wrestling champ, okay, which was kind of cool because we all hung out and had some fun out on the beach at night too. So, um, so basically, though, what we were doing all day long was trying to figure out what do, we, what do I need to do to take my business to the next level. So, so Richard said, look, you've got to build a new dream team. And this, this was step number one. And so I had, at a, when I had 500 employees, these were former TV executives, 
media guys, radio, newspaper, because we were an old school media company and we were just spending, we were literally spending over a million dollars a week in old media, television, newspaper, print, and radio. And so he said, Kevin, 50% of the people have left that form of media. Why are you still spending all that? You need to get a new dream team and your dream team should consist of advisors, mentors, and now in your world, professionals, engineers, installation gurus, marketing specialists, strategic partners, and I'm now applying this to your business, but also the missing point of this is digital advertising gurus. And so for me, that was one of the big things. And I said, well, what do you mean by digital advertising gurus? So it, it, it's, it's very obvious. Television viewership, as it's declining, where are those people going? Internet, Internet Facebook, right? Instagram, Google, YouTube. So you need to follow those eyeballs. And so at the end of the day, this could be very powerful. So let's just talk about it. The Garden Light Dream Team is without question a program engineered to allow dealers like you to double or triple your business. It's important that you have the expertise of a, of a, of a group that Michelle has created here to be able to help you because they're testing all kinds of pilot programs to be able to then show you how you can roll these programs out. Because Facebook, for example, has 1,800 different uh, demographic points that you can target. And as you look at the world of mobile, mobile, 30% of, of the electronic retailing business that I'm involved with, Home Shopping Network, QVC, now electronic retailing, 30% is happening on a mobile phone. So, so you need to be mobile ready, you need to be digital, and you need to be following programs like the, like, uh, the uh, Dealer Congress Garden Light has put together. So uh, that's number one. And, and this is sort of an extension of that, but getting the right dream team is important. And so for me, it became getting these digital folks and as part of my team and then embracing what we call digital disruption because when you're on fire, you need to rewire, right? And this will put it in perspective. Radio took 38 years to get to 50 million listeners. TV, 13 years to get to 50 million viewers. The internet, four. iPod, three. Facebook, two. And the Pokemon Go app got there. 50 million downloads in 15 days, right? And then, think this, this is the, the big one. Ed Sheeran did 375 million downloads in, in one week. So I asked the question, is the world changing a little faster now? Yep. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? So uh, it, it, it is, it, it, it's those that stay ahead of the curve now that have a great opportunity. And here's a company that you would think has all the money in the world to stay ahead of the curve. Time Magazine, Time Inc. They have 37 properties. Sports Illustrated, Time, Southern Living, et cetera. But their sales have been plummeting for the last seven years. It's unbelievable, right? Well, why? They're in the magazine business. People aren't reading as many magazines. But here's a magazine, that's Steve Forbes from Forbes Magazine, and he and I do an event every year, and we have one coming up in uh, July at, in Las Vegas at the Paris Hotel. And I said to Steve, you know, time is plummeting. What's happening in your world? And he said, Kevin, he said, you won't believe it, but we've had the most unbelievable year. We have 52 million readers monthly from a million six years ago. And I'm like, how did you do it? He said, we've paid attention to digital. What we're doing is we have 1,500 freelance contributors who give us daily and weekly content. Now, what they do though is, and, and by the way, they, they don't get paid for that, and I'm one of those contributors. So I give Forbes a weekly article, they put it out, but I send it to my millions of followers also. And so that's, so what they've done is they've had exponential growth by connecting with the contributors' followers giving them their highest readership in 98 years. In fact, 
that, well, that's what we're talking about. This is all Forbes.com. So um, if I, yeah, I'm glad you said that. So um, because they are now getting 70% of the revenue via digital. Now, the, the, the point of this, and this is where there's an opportunity for, for folks in the room. Because, you know, okay, you know, we're not Sports Illustrated or Forbes sitting here today, but I do my own digital magazine, and you can do the same thing. And a, a digital magazine is one that, it, let's, you know, you're in, the, in a local area. I know I met some folks um, from Seattle, for example. If you wanted to create a digital magazine about lighting, you can get all the content contributed from contributors. You don't have to pay them because they want to be part of the magazine. Now you have some base you can send it to, but then they're going to send it to their base. And now all of a sudden you're getting con this contribution and maybe Michelle, you could probably give them some content, maybe some uh, creative content. But so now you got this, this con you got all this content coming in for free. It's digital, so you don't have the cost to print it, and you can actually sell ads in it from people that are in the local market. So it can actually be a profit center, but even if it's a break even, what it's doing is generating a lot of action, activity, and it's going out, hopefully, to tens of thousands of people, but what it'll do for you is bring leads in and highlight your company. So I know Topher talked a little bit about this yesterday, and so I just, I'll, I'll just mention a few words about it because this has been something that's been near and dear to me, you know, becoming a key person of influence. And so when I met Daniel Priestley a number of years ago, I said, Daniel, he had this concept of how do you become a key person of influence? And, you know, you write books and, and then you put your books out. You've got to start creating content, right? So, um, in fact, I know Michelle, have you, have you shown him your book? No? Can, can I hold it up or not? No? Okay. So Michelle is writing a book I just wrote the foreword for. And so what, what happens when you create a book, I, when, when I came out, and I, as I, then this book came out over in England, and I co-wrote this then for the U.S. with Daniel. And, and the point of coming out with a book is there's, there's 2,000 radio stations in the U.S., with fewer listeners every every week so they you know they need content though because advertisers have been running and so you can do radio talk shows when i my my very first book before this one i started on one radio show then five then 25 then 50 then 100 and and each one of these was building sort of a, a funnel of people that were then calling me to do other things also so so this is the new world of digital and creating content and you know whether it's a book whether it's a digital magazine a podcast and let me explain how a podcast works a podcast has anybody done their own podcasting before just okay just one two okay so there's a, a woman in the united states she's a billionaire that has become a billionaire by doing one thing interviewing experts does anyone know who we're talking about? Oprah Winfrey. Okay, so what Oprah starts, she's on the news, and she was just interviewing experts, people with books, people that were famous, and she leveraged herself against those folks. So bottom line is, is she was creating content 20 years ago that became very powerful, and now she's Oprah Winfrey, multi-billionaire. So in the world that you're in, you're an entrepreneur, you need to start creating content. And it, whether it's podcasts, newsletters, digital magazines, books, material, Facebook Live. Has anybody ever done Facebook Live? Yeah? Oh, it's right, right now. now. Good. Okay. So this is very, very, I mean, we did a Facebook Live right on my kitchen table a few weeks ago. 50,000 people tuned in to watch. And then we ended up getting tens of thousands of opt-ins that came in from that, which were leads to follow up on. So, so I think the, the bottom line is that it's, you know, TV went like this, and Mr. Ed Seen on TV was going like this, but now we've turned the corner, and that's why I say that Garden Light's digital program can be very powerful because they're testing these different things in, in a local market 
to be able to then show you what has worked so that you can roll out their, their successful tests. And that's the power of, of the new digital format that's out there. So that's step number two. And um, uh, Michelle said, please talk to everybody here about sales a little bit. Um, I've just recently uh, uh, acquired the assets of Zig Ziglar, uh, who passed away a few years ago. But Zig uh, wrote 31 books in 36 languages and had thousands of hours of videos. And so I did a venture with the family, and we're bringing Zig, we call it back to the future. So um, you know, I, I say that knowing how to pitch, knowing how to sell is important. And when, when you think about it, you need a perfect pitch to build a website, write a press release, maybe get a book deal, maybe get a celebrity to join your, your team, right? Um, you know, celebrities can a lot of times be, you can make deals with celebrities very creatively. There's a whole bunch of ex, you know, uh, football players and NBA, depending on what market you're in, but from football to basketball to soccer to whatever sports there are out there. I mean, just for example, Mike Allstott is a local guy here in Tampa. He's an entrepreneur. And Mike loves to do deals, and he loves to get creative, and maybe you know, he won't take a big fee up front or some percentage of sales or something or do some kind of barter deal. But you know, this, this is the way you got to do um, things today because you, you got to get creative. You got to get people to join your team. And I, and I always say also, maybe you just need to raise some capital, so get that uh, perfect pitch down uh, in the process. So I'm going to share the steps to a perfect pitch and I've taken quite a few pitches over the years, literally tens of thousands of pitches. So I've learned how to kind of do that uh, in, in the right way. So let me give you, it's a simple thing for you to remember. If you're ever at a loss for how do you come up with this pitch, um, it's three steps. T's, please, and C's. And, and that's, it, if you just, if every, people call me and say, hey, I'm going on Shark Tank next week. Can you give me some tips on how to pitch? And I say, you got, first you gotta tease with a problem. Get their attention. Because if you don't have their attention, they're not listening. But also, show me a problem. And now, then you're gonna please with unique benefits and um, s supporting it with testimonials, with, here's a key thing, I say magical, transformations, right? And so before and after, and there's, I can't think of a better industry than the lighting industry to show before and afters, right? I mean, it's I, the pictures that you can show of someone's home before lighting and after is so amazing, right? So that's the please. And then the C's is give me an irresistible offer, an offer I can't refuse. So. Uh, and and in, in that world, that becomes the sort of as as Billy Mays was was one of you know uh, our, our pioneers of, of this term. But wait, there's more, right? If you've ever heard that one, but you can always sweeten the pot a little bit and give them a little extra at the end if they as a buy now incentive, right? So um, so I I, I want to uh, show you one of my favorite clips um, because. The Shark Tank had some amazing, I mean, thousands of, of segments now over the years, but here's uh, one of my favorites. Watch it. Hi, I'm Rebecca Riscotti, founder of City Kitty. City Kitty is seeking $100,000 for 15% equity in our company. For the 200 million cat owners around the world, cleaning a litter box is a chore that we all dread. Litter boxes are germ breeding grounds. Kitty litter gets tracked everywhere, they stink up our homes, they cost lots of money to continually fill, and they cause fights in otherwise peaceful households because nobody wants to clean this thing. It's disgusting. And cat owners don't know there's any option. But there is. You can toilet train your cat with City Kitty. Take a look here. <laughs> With City Kitty, the dirty litter box is gone. Your home is cleaner. You're saving money. You're doing good for the environment. And life at home is better for you and your cat. Has anyone ever seen City Kitty, by the way? No? So a couple of you, okay. Um, so, so this is ex everything that I've talked about here today is what we did with Rebecca. 
this never was an as seen on TV product. We created content, we created videos, we did podcasts, we did radio, we got her on TV shows. Um, by the way, there's a local TV show here in Tampa called Daytime. And it runs from 10 to 11, it's on NBC every single day. And it's, it's an advertorial based show. And for like $1,500, you can own a four minute segment on there and it can feature you and profile you as a tremendous pitch to the local community. And I know people, I know there's doctors on there that are coming, you know, chiropractors and plastic surgeons. And um, we do two segments every week with a travel uh, venture that we do and generating massive amounts of leads for our travel uh, business that, that I'm involved with in a partnership. So, so this is the same kind of thing we were doing for Rebecca um, getting, and by the way, this, this went, grew to over $10 million uh, in a toilet training thing for cats, right? So pretty crazy. Now, uh, I got to tell you, we got in the Wall Street Journal. We got her on Good Morning America, the Today Show. Um, and then The View called and, and they said, hey, Rebecca, would you like to come on The View? And she's, and it was, they said, we're going to have you on with Barbara Walters and, you know, a, a bunch of other hosts. And she's like, wait, Kevin, she said, I'm a little nervous. Sometimes Barbara Walters does negative stories, you know, so I, maybe I don't want to go on The View. And so I said, well, I'll tell you what, you, you, she did all these positive ones on all the other channels. So I said, I'll do, I'll take care of The View. So I, I went on The View and actually Barbara was there and that was fine, but it was nothing negative. Whoopi was there, Whoopi Goldberg. So we had a great time on The View. But when I was leaving uh, the, the studio, Whoopi said, Kevin, I, I need to talk to you. She said, uh, you know, I have a cat, Oliver, and they asked me to try City Kitty at home, and I did, but I showed Oliver City Kitty and said, hey, look, we're throwing the litter box away, and now you go, here's where you go to the bathroom on top of the toilet with City Kitty, and Oliver took one look at me, one look at City Kitty, ran in my bedroom, jumped on my bed, crapped all over my bed, okay? I'm like, whoa, thanks for not saying that live on television, okay? So, uh, yeah, Whoopi loves to do that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, right? So anyway, it's, um, I just want to say that as, as many ups as I've had, I've had double the failures because I only hit on one out of three of the things that I do, right? And so obviously, the, as, as the world of As Seen on TV has, has changed, I ended up, I sold As Seen on TV.com, As Seen on TV Inc. I said, I, I'm going to still take some products to television, but I'm a digital entrepreneur. And so I now have, Woo! yes, all right, hey, how about it? Okay, so, uh, yeah, and so I said, you know, the Garden Light Toolbox is a great product line that doesn't fail. It's engineered and, and Swiss inspired and comprehensive hands-on training by the best engineers and installers in the industry and in game-changing sales and digital marketing strategy. Is, it is designed for you to dominate your local LED market. So um, I totally believe that you can go, I mean, you can run ads on Facebook for as little as $10 an ad. And I mean, we ran, we ran a couple hundred dollars in ads on Facebook for something recently. We got 80 responses from it, 80 responses. Now on TV, I'd have to spend 10 grand to get 80 responses. So those that get in now, because it's the old way is this guy, this is Rupert Murdoch, who's the founder of Fox. I used to give him $5 million every year. And now I give him zero, because I don't even forget Fox. It, you know, we can't even make money on Fox because they still want the same amount to deliver half the viewers. And so that's the old way. We don't do that anymore. It's the new culture. It's millions of channels broadcasting to a few. And so this is the way that we go about it. And, you know, I just, I, I, I have a saying that I've lived my life by, and it's, it's just whatever you vividly imagine, ardently desire, sincerely believe, and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. So that's why I wake up every morning excited about the future and excited about new opportunities in this new digital space. And I asked my buddy, Tony Little, to share a couple words with you. Because um, Tony was very good at being able to take something very complex and whittle it down to something very simple. 
And so he and I kind of co-mentor each other. And if there's one thing to take away from today is, is that when, when you allow mentors and coaches like Garden to come in to, to your life and, and things that we do like this, that things can be very powerful. So I said to Tony, give us a couple of words. He's a local boy. And he said, Kevin, I'm gonna, I got four words for everyone here today that's thinking about how they're gonna supercharge the future business. And here's what Tony has left for you guys. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. You you can can do do it. it. That's all for me today. Thank you for having me. All right. Hey. Awesome.